Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. <music> guys, today we're going to be pressure canning purple hole peas. I got two 10 pound bags of shelled purple hole peas. Now, I didn't raise these peas right here in my garden and the reason I didn't cause there's a fella just right over yonder, not very far from my house that raises peas. And he's set up to where he's got one of them big shellers and he shells them and sells them. And it's just, as long as you can get them like that and you know they're fresh, not only is it cheaper to do that, it's a lot less work, and I got other things going on. So we buy our peas every year from that fella. But that's two 10-pound bags. But you can see I'm set up here. I got my water bath canner, and it's got my jars. I done washed them, and I got my jars in there, and that keeps them sanitized. The water's about 180 degrees, 190 just before a boil. I got my pressure canner over here. It's just sitting here on the butane cooker at the moment. I'd already put about two inches of water in it. And what I always do, guys, is in my water bath canner and in my pressure canner, I just put about two tablespoons. I don't measure it. Just put two or three good tablespoons of vinegar in there and that'll keep your jars when they come out, they'll be clean. They won't have that old hard cloudy film on them from hard water. I got my pot sitting over here that we're going to blanch our peas in. And I got my new burner in yesterday, guys. This is a 1500 watt burner, hot plate. I think it's a Caddo brand. I'll put the link in the description below for where I purchased this from. And I'll put in the video here, attach what the proper name and which model it is, because I can't rightly remember. I looked them up and done research, and this is the one I chose. Like I said, right now, nowadays, it's cheaper to use electricity than it is gas, propane. So I'm going to blanch my peas right here. Once we get them blanched and the jar is loaded, I'm actually going to use this electric plate and put my pressure canner over here on the electric plate. That's just using this over here for a stand at the time. But as always with my candy, I'm gonna say before I start out, you don't never watch my video or anybody else's video and totally depend on what they do. You get you a canning book. For example, I like the ball blue book, canning and preserving. We're gonna be doing purple hole peas, so you turn in here. And guys, if you ain't never canned, and you maybe a couple days ago you watched my tomato canning and we done it in the water bath. That's why you need a book. If you don't understand that, cause to tomatoes is an acid, has acid in it, so you can water bath. But foods that don't have acid in it has to be pressure canned. So I turned in here and I found where it's peas, black eyed, crowder, or field peas. Well, purple hole peas is a field pea. You can cold pack or you can hot pack. Well, hot pack's what we're going to do. We're going to blanch them, and we're going to blanch them for about three to four minutes. We ain't trying to get them totally cooked. You just want to blanch them. That way, when you open your jar out to eat them, you put them in your pot on the stove. By the time they get good and hot, then they'll be finished cooking and ready to eat. If you cook them here and then do that, your peas will come out too mushy when you get ready to eat them. So you want to just blanch them for three to four minutes. Processing time, it's gonna be 50 minute for quart jars, which is what we're gonna be doing in the pressure canner. And guys, when I get to that point, not only do you depend on these books, you depend on your book that comes with your pressure canner. You don't do what I say or anybody else says. Where I live here is my altitude. I use a 10-pound weight on this. And we'll get into that a little bit more here shortly. But you want to keep your book to your pressure canner. Or if you bought a used pressure canner, 
you want to get online and find a book because you can usually find a printable book or where you can read about it how to use your canner you want to use your book for your canner this here's a presto 23 quart like i said everything i'm using out here the affiliated links will be in the description below so right now guys we're going to take one bag of these peas over here to my sink even though they done been washed, I like to wash them again. We're going to load them up in this little pot right here. You bring it to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, you blanch them about three to four minutes. I kind of give them a little stir, and then we'll start loading our jars. So let's move over here to the sink and give our peas a little wash. I'm going to put one bag of these back in the ice box. So now we're over here at the sink. I got a dish pan sitting in my sink full of water. We'll pour these peas in this dish pan. Like I said, they done been washed one time, but I like washing them again. And I'm gonna lose a little peas if I don't put a stopper in that thing. So I set my pan up high now, guys, because my, my peas was running out. Plus, I wanna have it like this right here because I'm gonna dump them in this water. And guys, I don't know where y'all from, but like I said, this is 10 pound bag of shell peas. And I want to say somewhere that probably gets about $25 per 10 pound bag. And I promise you, you ain't going to raise 10 pounds of shell peas. And I ain't talking about the work you're going to put in, Bob, but just raising them, watering them, fertilizing and then the, having to pick them and shell them for $25, you ain't going to do that. But like I said, if it comes to it to where that man don't grow none, and I know he ain't going to grow none, I can grow purple whole piece. But I just give them a little hand, flip them around in here. Then I'll fill this sink up with water. And I'll pour them in some more clean water. I got a screen in the bottom of this sink where this water will drain off. Slowly, it don't drain fast because these peas stop the little screen up. I give them another little good wash in there. Then I'll take me something, my spatula, whatever you got that's got a good drain in it. And I I put them back in the pan. And they going to go from this pan right on over to the cooking pot. Well, actually, I'm going to bring the cooking pot over here and put them in there. Because once you put peas in the pot, you want to put enough water to cover the top of your peas. guys we got our peas all washed and clean and I, I don't really know the brand of that sheller that fella got over there but it's a big sheller and you it, it's got them peas them peas is clean guys you ain't got to stand here for hours picking trash and stems and all out he's got a jam up sheller my pot brought over here to the sink and I got a little water put in there we may have to put a little more we better dump these peas right in this pot that we're gonna be blanching them in you want to have enough water to cover your peas I got them covered in this pot here about inch of water inch and a half Alright guys, we bringing our peas over here and we setting it on our new cat burner. 
and I ain't gonna turn this wide open because I don't want it to get too hot too quick and burn the peas. I'm gonna turn it on about medium to medium high heat. And I'm gonna have to watch it because like I said, this is the first time I'm using this burner and it's supposed to be a real good burner. It's 1500 watts. That's about as big as you can get that runs off of 110 electricity. You try to get over 1800 watts, you're gonna have to have a 220 plug. That's more of a commercial height plate then. But we're going to cover this. I ain't got the top to this pot, so I lost it somewhere. So I got an old pizza pan that kind of fits right on it. We're going to cover that, and I'm going to watch it. Well, like I said, I'm going to be staring it occasionally. But once it comes to a bowl, we're going to let them boil for about three minutes, staring them. You don't want them to scorch on the bottom. I'm going to turn my fire off, and then I'll get back with y'all. Then we'll start jarring them up. All right, guys. We just finna start getting up to a bowl. I changed my pot over on y'all. I put my pea pot back over here on the gas burner because the electric burner, even though it's 1500 watts, it's taking too long to heat this big pot of peas and water up to a bowl. So I went on and put my pressure canner on it because it only has about two inches of water in it. And I got it set to where it's just below a bowl. That way when I get ready to put my jars in, it shouldn't take as long to get up to pressure. But when you start getting up to a bowl, you're going to start seeing all this white foam when you're doing field peas. I just dip off as much of that as I can. Again, this is like why I like working outside. I just chunk it out there in the yard and then I take my water hose and wash it away off the rock there. Give them a little stir. You don't want to over stir them because you don't want them to start getting mushy on you or nothing. You don't want to cook them that long. But this water is just been to start to a bowl. It's starting to make bubbles. I'm going to dip off as much as this I can. You ain't going to get it all off, but when you put it in the jars, it'll settle back down and you don't see it. Just get the biggest part of it off. Now you can see when I stir it, that just gets real thin. But now it's starting to bubble, so I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. And I'll get back with y'all and we'll start loading our jars up. Alright guys, it's been three minutes. Actually, it's been about three and a half minutes. I done turned the fire out over here and I got my cannon lids washed and they in this little pot and this is what's handy about this electric ball canner it's got a little spigot right here you always got hot water on hand like i said that water's just before boiling so i put it on my lid even though some of these lids nowadays say you ain't got to do that i still do it it's just a i don't i don't want to run the risk of doing all this work and then they not seal we're going to set our pot of peas right up here on this table. That's what I like about my outside aluminum table I got built here. It don't look like much, but it's good to work on. I can set stuff high on it. Don't matter. Now we're going to get our jars out of our water bath. all my jars out the water bath holds seven jars seven quart jars holds 11 pint jars if they ball jars and some of these jars you get nowadays are different shapes it won't hold 11 the other day I can and it would only hold 10 pint jars be careful when you're doing this you splash that hot water up on there to burn that hand I'm just not one much on using gloves. I, I can't I can't work with gloves on guys. Alright, next we're finna start dipping our peas out into our jars. I'm gonna put about a half a jar in here. In the ball canning book, it says it's optional. You can put a half a teaspoon of salt per pint or one teaspoon per quart. Now, we always put salt in ours. 
So I'm going to fill it up about halfway. Maybe not halfway, just as long as I got some peas in there. Let's see, I put two scoops in each one, and then I'm going to add my teaspoon of salt. We like adding salt because if you don't, when you open your jar of peas and put them on the stove, it's hard to get them peas just right on the salt and you'll mess up and over salt them. If you go on and put your little salt in them now, it's like it soaks into them peas and it really makes them good, but they ain't too salty. And you still can add a little salt if you want them a little saltier, but this salt will be cooked inside your peas. We're going to do this, and then we're going to top these jars off. It calls for a one-inch head space, and we're going to top it off with the juice that these peas are blanched in right here. Put my lid back on my electric canner there so my water will stay hot. Well, I had a steady kick on, use more electricity. All right, next I got my salt, and I just use Morton's Cannon and Pickling Salt. For some reason I didn't have this, I have just used regular table salt, but I'd rather have the Cannon Salt. Now I got a half a teaspoon measure here. I didn't get my one teaspoon, so I'm going to just put two, two in each one. And guys, this is optional, and you ain't got to worry about getting the salt just right. It don't matter if it's got a little bit more salt or a little less. One teaspoon ain't going to make a quart jar of peas taste too salty. But now if you some reason you can't eat salt or ain't supposed to have salt, then just don't put no salt in there. Like I said, that's, that's optional. And just like this, I'm talking. And I don't know if I put one or two in that one right there, so I'm going to just leave it a half because I'd rather for it to be a little less salt than too much salt. Now we're going to finish filling our jars so right now I'm gonna put three scoops in each one that way I can come back around and kind of get them all the same amount of beads y'all see me keep looking up at y'all that's cuz I make sure that camera ain't kicked off I have been making videos and my camera kick off so now I'm gonna go right back around put another scoop in them Until I'm out of peas, or the jars is all full. I must have had a bigger scoop than that because it filled it up. Now I'm going back around and I'm going to fill it up with juice till it gets right there about the bottom of that ring. It's about an inch. Like I said, once you get used to it, you can eyeball it. You ain't got to measure it. But to begin with, if you ain't used to doing it, Put just a few more peas in that. To begin with, if you ain't used to canning these little mer tools right here, got little measurement marks on it, you can use to measure your, some of them do. That one right there don't. But some of them come with a little measure on them. Again, guys, everything I'm using for canning will be in the description below this video. And it's also on my home page, if you'll go to the community tab and open it up, there's two pages you can open up and read. That's affiliated links of stuff that I use or have in these videos. It don't cost you a thing to use them affiliated links, but it does help me out. I get a little bit off of it when you purchase through them links. And even if you ain't going to purchase that exact item, if you go through that link, I still get a little small percent off of what you purchase, and it really helps me out, guys. 
All right, now I'm taking my little tool and you want to stick it down there and there and all you're doing is just going around the edge of your jar to make sure you get all your air bubbles out. You do this with anything you can. You don't want no air bubbles trapped down in there. That way after you can, you'll come out and you won't have enough juice in your jars. And I'll sell sometimes get some jars when I can to comes out the juice is a little low in them but that don't hurt a thing if you open a can of canned food and you got some just saying these is peas if you do have a few peas that's above the juice just take your spoon and dip them top ones off until you get below the juice and you're good to go that's what i've always done and it may not be nothing wrong with them other ones now i got a little bit too much juice in this one so i'm gonna dip it back down Get that back down there to a one inch head space. That's what the ball book calls for. I think everything's looking pretty good. We're gonna clean the top of our jars and I like taking me a clean paper towel with some vinegar and put on it. Like I said, I, want, I don't wanna do all this work in them one night seal. So take your paper towel and if you start using your paper towel and you get some something on it, starts getting dirty, get another paper towel or swap size and put some more vinegar and keep cleaning. You sure don't want to go through all this work and then have a jar not seal. But guys, if you can and then you have a jar not seal, all you do is take that jar and set it in the ice box and you go on and eat it in the next day or so. So now we got our lids over here in this hot water. Just before a bowl, this little tool's got a magnet on it. You can stick in that hot water and get it where you ain't got to touch that hot water with your hands. You want to center your lids right there up on top of your jars. Then I got my rings here and some warm water. It's done cooled off. I wash these and I put them in some water to sterilize them. And when you put your bands on, put them finger tight. Don't tighten the crap out of them. You put them down there on that, use one hand and put them down there. And if that jar starts spinning, you tight enough. Don't, don't keep trying to tighten it down. Look like a 10 pound bag would probably do eight quarts. I still got enough in here, I think, to do another quart. All right, guys. Now we're going to take your pressure canner. Like I said, I went on and put this pressure canner. This is a Presto 23 quart pressure canner. Mine calls to put about two inches of water in it. And I put about two tablespoons of vinegar in there. Cause like I said, that keeps your jars clean. It keeps that hard water from leaving that old white film on your jars. We're going to set these right down in there. I'm going to go on and crank the knob up on high. Now you don't want this water boiling when you put these jars in here. You just want to keep this water up there about 178 degrees, as long as it ain't boiling. And I'm going to say this again, guys. If you buy a canner, this Presto ain't the best one out there but the best one out there cost almost twice as much as this presto but these prestos been pretty good my mom's got an old presto i didn't put my name on it when something happens to her i'm getting it it's a presto but it's heavy duty made the only thing i don't like about it they did come out with a better seal since then now we got our jars in there guys now see i put them jars in there and my water rised up a little too high you don't want your water way up on your jars. You only want your water up on your jars about two inches. Now, I got my coffee cup here, and I done washed it. I knew I was going to need it. I'm going to dip down in there. Take a couple cups of that water out of there. As 
Set my jar back in there. Now that looks about like two, two and a half inches. Like I said, it ain't gotta be dead on the money. You just don't want it too shallow cause it run out of water. And you don't want it way up on your jar halfway or three quarters. Next on your canner, guys, before you put the lid on, you always look through this little port right here where that weight goes. Turn it up toward the sky and make sure you can see through that. Make sure it ain't stopped up. We're going to put a lid on here. Now this canner right here has got a mark on the lid that you line up with the mark on the right handle. And you just lock it in place. Now I'm going to spin mine around so my gauge will be facing me. Now at this point, guys, again, this is where you need to follow the manual with your canner. But I'm pretty sure all of them, you're going to set this on here and you're going to let it build up steam until steam starts coming out, a steady stream of steam out of this port. Once it starts coming out, a steady stream of steam, that's kind of hard to say real quick, you want to set you a timer. And it's very convenient to have this little timer that come with this little kit here, the jar holder and the tongs and the little funnel would all come in a little kit. It's in the description below. But when that steam starts coming out on a steady stream, you want to set your timer for 10 minutes and you want to let it sit there and blow steam for 10 minutes. And that's getting all your air stuff out of the canner, building it up with steam in there. At that point, I'm going to get back with y'all. And that's when we set the weight on there. And the weight where I live in our altitude is a 10 pound weight. This pressure canner comes with a 10 pound weight and then it's got another weight you add on here, you can make it a 15 pound weight. But at that point, we'll put this weight on here and we'll watch our gauge and when that gauge gets up there to about 10 or 11 pounds, this weight will start jiggling. You want to turn your fire down and get it just right to where that gauge is staying there 10 or 11 pounds and this juggler is just sitting there with a little small constant jiggle. Just chick, 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 chick. If, the, if the hot, if the fire is too hot, this juggler will start jumping around, I mean, like it's trying to blow it off, you know to turn your fire down. But right now, guys, we're just going to wait on it to heat up till our steam comes out and then I'll get back with y'all and we'll time our steam for 10 minutes. All right, guys, now we got a steady stream of steam coming out of here. At this point, I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes, and you're going to let it steam for 10 minutes, blowing that steam out before we put that weight on there. All right, we've been steaming for 10 minutes. Now we're going to set our weight on there. And at this point, I turn my knob down on this Cadco 1500 watt electric burner, you guys. This is doing good if any of you are interested in an electric burner for your pressure cannon. Your stove's normally 1800 to 2200 watts because it's a 220. But the biggest I could find in a hot plate 110 was 1700 watts. And I was curious about how good it was going to do. But since I already had this canner sitting on this hot plate and had my water right at boiling before I put my jars in I turned it on 12 and it brought it right up to steaming good and now that I got it steaming good and when waited our 10 minutes I'm gonna try turning it back down to 11 I can listen to what it's doing in there boiling you don't want it boiling too hard vibrating your jars too much now we're gonna watch our pressure when our pressure starts getting close to 10, if it's going up real fast, I watch it and I turn my heat down just a little bit. You don't want it to be so hot it just goes up real fast. You want it to slowly come up. And as it's coming up, back off on your heat. So when it gets to 10 or 11 PSI, it'll be holding it right there and that jiggler will start jiggling. At that point, we'll set our timer for 50 minutes. So I'm gonna get back with y'all when it gets up to pressure. All right, guys, you see that the gauge is reading about 11 pounds. I know that weight's 10 pounds, but 
but I don't really worry about the gauge because they gonna be off a little bit because they just cheap gauges but as long as you got the weight on there and you see how it's got that slow jiggle y'all can hit it. you adjust your heat to keep at that, that, that slow jiggle if your heat starts getting too hot that thing will start jiggling too fast and too hard and you know to turn your heat down a little bit so now we're going to set our little timer to start for 50 minutes on quart jars on field bees the ball cannon book calls for 50 minutes and then we'll turn the fire off and it's going to have to set until the gauge goes all the way back down no jiggling and here's one of the most important parts y'all see that little tab right there that's popped up once the pressure built up and i put the jiggler on that tab will pop up and that locks the lid you do not remove this lid until that locks release you ain't got no pressure on your gauge and you ain't got no pressure on that weight Now when it gets to that point, I'm going to come back with y'all. But like I said, when it gets to that point, you're going to turn the fire out. Let everything cool down and then you're going to wait a little while longer, at least 5 or 10 minutes to make sure. And then we'll remove the weight and make sure no pressure comes out. And then we'll open the lid. And after we remove the lid, we let them set another about 10 minutes before we remove the jars. And that lets all your pressure equalize into them jars. If you remove them too quick, you can cause your seals not to seal. So it's going to be about 50 minutes now. About when it's 50 minutes, I get with y'all and we're going to show you what it looks like. And at that point, I'll go on and wash my other peas and get them started blanching while we're waiting on things to cool down. All right, guys, it's been 50 minutes. At this point, you turn your fire off. And then you just go do you whatever you want to do. But there's a couple things I forgot to mention. If you're new to canning, I don't care what kind of pressure canner you have. When you start coming up to heat, you come up to heat slow. This is a burner, and guys, it worked great. But if you put your pressure canner on a fish cooker or something like that, I have a metal plate that I actually put between my canner and that fire. But you don't come up too fast, too quick with a too hot of a fire, because them are made of aluminum. And if it warps your pot, then your canner is no good no more for canning, because your, your lid won't never seal again if you warp that pot. And I hate that I missed that a while ago, but you do not come up the heat real fast on these canners. That's why you've seen me, I already have my water in here. And I let it slowly come up to wrap before a bowl. And then when it got loaded, then I turned my fire up until I started hearing the bowl in there. And then I started cranking my fire back down and let it slowly come up. So that is a big no-no. You never put that on a hot fire or even on your electric stove in your house. Because them's like 2,000 up to 2,500 watts. You can't just always set them on there and crank them wide open. You'll warp your canner. Now back to where we at right now. I just turned the fire off. And I'm just going to let it. And it's going to take it a while to cool down. Like I said, you wait till that pressure drops all the way down. That weight stops jiggling. And that little lock tab falls. Once it does that, I'll make sure I wait another 5 or 10 minutes. And then I'll remove my wait and when i do it i'm gonna take me a towel or something in case it is any other steam in there it won't come out and get on my hand and then after i do that i'll remove the lid and we'll wait another five minutes to ten minutes to let the pressure equalize in your jars before removing them so i'll be back with y'all i don't know how long it'll take but you do not take this off the burner and go set it in no cold water or anything to try to hurry it up to cool down, guys. If you do that, you're going to warp your canner. Not only that, you can get hurt. These things, it ain't that bad if you'll follow the directions. That's why I always preach. 
Keep your manuals to your pressure canner. If you ain't got it, go online and find one. Have your pressure canning book. But you do not take this off and try to rush it to cool down faster. You will end up warping your canner or you could mess up and jar it around and the lid get blow off in your face or something. I've seen it in one of my other videos before. I wasn't there when they blew up, but I seen the aftermath of two pressure cookers blowed up. One was my mom and one was another lady, an older lady. And when it happened, it scared them to death and luckily they wasn't standing right there beside it. But I'll be back with y'all shortly after this cools down. Alright guys, we all cooled off and it's been about an extra 10 minutes. My gauge is down on zero. My little lock tail back here has done fell back down. Now I'm going to take me a pot holder. And I'm going to pick this weight up. No steam come out, so that means all the pressure's off. But when you go to unlock your lid, you don't just open it up towards you. You open it and tilt it away from you so the steam will go away from you if there's any steam left in there. I like to stand back just for extra precautions, keep my head back and tilt it up. So now at this point, I'm going to let them sit there with the lid off for about 5 or 10 minutes. You can hear the sounds that's making when that cool air went in there. I'm going to let that sit there probably about 10 minutes. And guys, then I'm going to get my jars out. While I was waiting on it to cool down, I blanched my next load of peas. And I'm going to load up seven more quart jars and do this again. But I'll get back with y'all in a little bit. Alright guys, now I'm going to remove these jars. And there's your quart jar of pressure can purple hull peas. I'm going to set these right over here on the table under y'all. And don't want y'all kick over my peas down there now. Guys, when you're doing this, you set them somewhere and you leave them there until they totally cool down. Now, I'm outside, so when they cool down to outside temperature, I gently move them into the house. But you want to do that gently and put them somewhere and let them sit overnight. And then I check for seals tomorrow to make sure they all still seal before I put them in the pantry. So right now, I'm going to have to add a little bit of water back in here because it evaporated when it's making you steam. So I'm going to add me a little bit of water back in here. I'm going to get my jars out, fill them, load the pressure canner right back up just like we did before. And after I'm done for the day, I'll get back with y'all and let y'all see how many jars I got out of that 20 pounds of shield piece. Alright guys, what does Mickey Mouse say? Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. We done with this little process for today. We ended up 18 quart jars of purple hull peas. And that's supposed to have been 20 pounds of shield peas we purchased. Guys, if any of you out there has been interested in a electric hot plate that'll work on a canner, this here is the Caddo C A D C O C R S two, but they make a K R dash one. That the only difference is instead of stainless steel, it's black, and it's a lot cheaper. I'll put this in the description below this video. This is 1500 watts. Now guys, I've had a one I think was a thousand watts and it won't near about work on a pressure canner. Now you might could heat it up on a burner and then set it on there once it's hot and it might keep it, but you don't need to be moving a pressure canner once it's got pressure on it. But this is 1500 watts and it worked quite well today. But guys, appreciate you watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this little video. Get out there and get you some field peas and get them canned up. Ain't nothing better than good field peas over some good cornbread. Take that juice and spread over that cornbread with them peas and that's a meal within itself. But thanks for watching. God bless. See y'all next time.